Wendell Carter Jr., now in his fifth NBA season, is a jack-of-all-trades type of center. He's such a valuable part of the Orlando Magic because of how versatile he is and how he impacts the game in an assortment of ways. While he's missed 18 games this season because of a plantar fascia strain, when Carter has played, he has shown to be a vastly improved player, especially when you compare where his game is now versus before he was traded to the Magic in March of 2021. I want to start with his defense just because I don't think he gets nearly enough credit for what he does on that end of the floor. One of the first things I examine with bigs is how effective they are when having to switch in pick and rolls and pick and pops. Carter has switched on to a ball handler in on-ball pick situations 147 times in the 18 games he's appeared in this season according to second spectrum tracking data. It comes out to about 13 times per 100 possessions. The only center so far averaging more is Brooklyn's Nick Claxton, who switches on to ball handlers nearly 20 times per 100 possessions. Third on that list is Miami's Bam Adebayo, who's arguably been the best switch defender in the league at his position the last couple years. Opponents with Carter defending after the switch have really struggled. In the 45 instances a shot was taken following the switch, 29 were misses. That's just 35.6% shooting. Just to compare, opponents are shooting 42.2% with Adebayo guarding the switch so far this year and 35.8% when it's Claxton. Another big man that excels at this is Boston's Al Horford and opponents are shooting 35.2% after the switch. I think it's fair to say these are the four best pick and roll switching bigs in the league right now. Just watching these clips, you can see how well Carter moves his feet, anticipates movements, and stays within the ball and the basket. It's much of the same when he's guarding in isolation. Defending in space on an island is such a critical element of the game today. When a big isn't able to hold his own, it can destroy a team's defense. The Magic are in a much better spot defensively when Carter is on the floor. Carter has so far defended 38 shots in isolation this season per second spectrum, and the opponents have made 16 of them. That's just 42%. Again, just to compare, Adebayo's defensive field goal percentage in isolation is also 42%. Claxton is at 38%. I know this isn't a feature on Claxton, but he's making a serious case to be the defensive player of the year. I think both he and Kevin Durant are right there in the running for the Nets. Something else that's important to note is that opponents haven't really looked to post up against Carter much this year. He's 265 pounds and built really well. He's not easy to back down. He shows terrific resistance and has an incredibly strong base. Opponents so far have only taken six post-up shots with Carter as the defender. Last year, they took 53 shots and made just 16 of them. That's 30.2%. Last year, in fact, Carter defended the most post-up shots in the league. Just to give you an idea of how impressive that mark is, Nikola Jokic, who's obviously not known for his defense, had a defensive field goal percentage in post-ups of 57% on 35 shot attempts last season. The one thing Carter is not defensively is a shot blocker. He's only averaging 0.4 blocks per game this season. He just doesn't have much of a vertical lift, but he does do a good job going straight up and trying to obstruct shots. He's not much of a charge taker either. He's drawn seven charges so far in his career. I wouldn't really describe him as a backline defender, so the opportunities are fewer. Offensively, he shows a nice blend of power and finesse. He doesn't have a ton in his offensive arsenal, but he can really dip his hand in a variety of categories. For a center, he's very good driving to the basket. In fact, among all centers who have taken at least 30 shots on drives this season, Carter has the third best field goal percentage at 59.4%. Only Jokic and Naz Reed have higher marks. The Magic seem to be using Carter a little less as a role man in pick and roll. Just 16% of his action so far has come in this manner, which is about 7% less than last year. But Orlando has so many bigs that do this well that they can rotate that task around. Mo Bamba and Mo Wagner 
both do that very well. A shared trait of many of the Magic's frontcourt players is that they move really well without the ball and do a good job identifying creases in the defense for cuts toward the basket. A big improvement for Carter so far this year is his short mid-range shooting. From 5 to 14 feet away, he's made 16 of his 32 attempts, so 50%. Last year from this range, he shot just 42%. Carter the last couple years has extended his range and now isn't afraid to let it fly from three point distance. Right now he's shooting just about 34% from beyond the arc on 3.4 attempts per game. The thing that really pops out at me though is his corner three point shooting, which is critical because that's typically where players take their spray out feet set threes. He's made nine of his 17 attempts so far from three point corners, so 53%. Maybe his most underrated quality on offense is his screening. He's actually tied for third in the league right now in screen assists with 5.1 per game. Only Steven Adams and DeMontis Sabonis are averaging more. Rudy Gobert is also averaging 5.1. For a big man, he has very good vision and instincts and makes really nice passes, either in high-low situations or in kickouts off short rolls in the paint. All in all, as I said at the top, Carter is a jack-of-all-trades type player. Uh, he's kind of like a renaissance man out there on the court. He's not necessarily a master at any one thing, but he does continue to improve each year, which bodes well for his future. Granted, he's missed 18 games because of that foot injury. He's averaging career highs in several categories, including points, assists, and free throw attempts. His best performance this season so far came on November 1st at Oklahoma City, when he erupted for 30 points to go along with 12 rebounds, two assists, two steals, and one block. So that will wrap up this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. I will continue to do more player analysis features like this throughout the season. Some of the other players that I've done recently include San Antonio's Jeremy Sohan, New York's Jalen Brunson, and Utah's Walker Kessler. I did some other Magic players earlier in the year, including Paolo Banquero, Franz Wagner, Bol Bol, Markel Fultz, and Mo Wagner. 